Amen. Father God, we are thanking you because you ordained today to be a day where your saints, people you have bought, sanctified, mm. meet here. Yes. And we will share revelations, we will share things that will cause us to sit up so that we will make it to the end. Others started, but they didn't finish well. And Father, our country here, our aim is that we have started, we are running a race, and our aim is that we will finish well. Amen. When the end comes, we will be those who are receiving the prizes Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Let our meeting here today be blessed. Amen. Let your presence be so mighty in our midst. Speak to our hearts, everything, God, that whoever will stand here, let him be a blessing, impacting inspiration and revelation to our spirits. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We give you praise. Amen. Amen. I thank God for Bishop. And God bless you for being obedient to Amen. do what you have started doing. And I believe that the Bible says that do not despise small beginnings. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. It will be so great. Amen. 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 That's why I also want to appreciate great men of God, women of God who are here for your time and for your effort. Amen. Yes, as the Bishop said, we are sharing the end time signs and you and I are very familiar with a lot of them and it will appear as if we are repeating ourselves. No, we are not. I just want us to know that when God said to Noah, when you mentioned Noah, I will destroy the earth. So God actually meant his word and the earth was destroyed with water. When God said he would save Noah, he saved it. He saved the whole family. God also said that, no, Abraham, you are going childless, I will give you the fruit of the womb. God was favorable and faithful to his word, and God made sure that Abraham had a son. Now God said, before even Abraham had a son, God said that your, your seed and your, your generation shall be carried to Egypt for 400 years. After that, I will return them to the land I'm giving you. Amen. When God said that, that also came to pass. Amen. And said, I will give you a son. Upon his shoulder there shall be no government. Mm -hmm. And he will die and save his children. Mm -hmm. And that through also, Jesus came and died. Didn't he die? Yeah. Yeah. And said, when he, dies on the, when he died on the third day, this guy will rise from the dead. And he will be the Lord of Lords. He will Amen. be the King of Kings. Amen. Everyone will celebrate him. Amen. Did that happen or did it happen? It happened. It happened. Now, that tells me that if God says also in the same way that the end will come, the end will come. Mm. Yeah. If said Jesus will come, mm. he will die and save mankind. Mm. And after dying on the third day, he will rise from the dead. Amen. And truly Jesus died Amen. and rose from the dead. Amen. And he's gone up to heaven and he said he will come again. Mm. Then you and I need to make sure that just as he came, so shall he come again as well. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now in Mark chapter 13, the verse is 32. The Bible says that, um, but of that day and the hour, no one know it. Mm -hmm. No, not the angels in heaven. And Jesus was about to go, and in Mark, Mark has only got 16 chapters. And there he said that that hour, that day, nobody knows it. And here he went ahead and said that, for the Son of Man is as a man taking a fire journey. And then he went ahead in verse 35. That's why I want you to pay attention if you are reading with me. Mark 13, verse 35. Was watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house comes, at evening, at midnight, or at clock, or in the day, or in the morning. Let when he comes suddenly, he will find you sleeping. Now, like the verse 37 said, and what I say to you, I say to all, watch. I want you to turn and tell somebody, watch. Watch. Oh, tell somebody, watch. Watch. Now, so when we are talking about the signs of the end times, Jesus actually told us to watch. Amen. What did he tell us to watch? He told us to watch certain things. So I tell you, and what I say to you also, I say to all, do what? Watch. And I believe that if God says watch, then you don't need to close your eyes, you need to watch. Today I decided to show you something here, which I, I saw it myself, and I was shocked. Somebody sent me this going on in some country, which you all hear from. <coughs> I just decided to show it to you. It is so amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a, a tattoo parlor on Trendy South Beach. Is it the 666 really big? Yeah. 
People are taking six and six and they are on their shoulders, their neck, every part of their body as a tattoo to show up that they have got the mark of the beast. And he's a man of God who has gathered over. In almost, he started 20 years ago gathering souls and telling the people that he represents the Antichrist. He said, not that somebody said, he said, I am the Antichrist. Don't put your eyes on Jesus. Put your eyes on me. He is the Antichrist. The word Antichrist is a bad translation of a word that actually means the new Christ, the second coming. Puerto Rican born Jose Luis de Jesus Miranda. And he has got a church, a big church, with a very massive following. So he, he's, he's met his Christ, uh, the body of Christ, talking to them. America. Millions of followers. And he's saying that he is the Antichrist. And Jesus is nobody to him. He has done miracles more than Jesus. I want you to, that's what I want you to see. So I've done greater things than the Jesus of Nazareth. And people are happy. Now, so when we talk of the signs of the end time, I want us to, today go on into deeper teaching. Jesus said, You will not see me anymore. That's what I know. I have never read it in the Bible that way. Because he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'll come back again for you. Jesus never said, You will never see me anymore. Now I want us to, with the next 15, 20 minutes, I will not spend too much of your time. Now if this is going on, and people will go, he is the Antichrist. He said, I am the Antichrist. Not that but somebody said it to me. He is saying he is the Antichrist. He is referring to the suicide death of more than 900 killed in the so-called Jonestown Massacre. Okay, so let's go through the scriptures. But he says mass suicide would Now, so what is the Bible saying about the signs of the end time? Jesus said, watch. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. It's very easy that some people may hold the Bible, but they will never read it. And when you are not reading the Bible, the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people have gone into captivity because they lack understanding, Isaiah 5.13. That means that if you and I, until we hear this and learn it and then know and watch the sign, you are welcome, Bishop. God bless you. And I want us to go to what you call the Olivet Discourse. The disciples of Jesus met Jesus when he was about to go in Matthew 24. And then he was narrating to them some of the things they should watch. And I want you also to relate it to the environment we find ourselves in. The things we are seeing on television, as Bishop started talking about. And let's see that if we are, yesterday I met a, a group of pastors, we were talking. And a pastor's meeting like this, I'm sure you have got some pastors more here. There was an offering time, and everybody was giving offering into an offering bowl. And as people were giving offering bowl, one pastor who has never attended the meeting before decided to put money into the offering, uh, the envelope and drop it in the bowl. And as he dropped it, when he came to counting, the guy said, who brought, who brought this offering here? Who brought this man sitting here? Now what they do is that you don't bring money. He didn't know. You bring the name of a church member you want to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You don't, you, you know, you know, it's occultic practice, mm, yes. occultic setting. Sorry, is there a sacrifice to kill someone? I don't know what they do, but you need to bring a name of a church member you want to sacrifice. Mm. Whether you are sacrificing to the devil, you are sacrificing to this. Oh okay. It's not at that meeting I went, but they were, they were saying it happened somewhere. Mm -hmm. oh. And I said, wow. so this person who didn't know, find himself in the midst of 
What's happening? People want to just grow big churches. Have failed to be considered to be driving the best cars and to be those who are giving, who are giving all the praises and the accolades that will go with. So he said, what don't you know we don't take this money here? Didn't you tell him? They asked the person who brought him. Didn't you tell him that we don't take this money here? These are the things that Jesus mentioned in his the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24. So the disciples said, don't show us what will happen when we are approaching the time. And John, when John's eyes was open to see the angel, he said, when I saw the angel, I decided to lie down. I said, don't do that. Don't worship me. Worship only God. In, in Revelation 22, from verse 10 to 12. And the Bible said that when John said, I decided to say, no, don't do that. But go and say this to them. He that is unjust, let him continue to be unjust. He that is just, let him continue to be just. He that is righteous, let him continue to be righteous. He that is doing good, let him continue to do good. He that is doing wickedness, let him continue to be for Behold, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me. Now anything God said he would do, as I told you, if Jesus said he would come and die, and he died, if he says he will come again, I can tell you he will come again. On the day of ascension, in Acts chapter 1, the Bible said that the angel appeared to them that why you saw in the air, this same Jesus, as you see him going, so shall he come. What were the signs he left for you and I? And I'm happy that we are here, mature Christians are sitting here, not church members, so that we can go and then share with people who sit under our feet. A lot of things are going on in the Christendom, in the, from the pulpit, and people are too, 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 too confined and enshrined in our dogmatism and the fact that I belong to this, I belong to this. Even when people are being led astray, they don't want to break through. Here, the man said, I am the Antichrist, mm -hmm. but he has no followers. Mm -hmm. You go and meet the church member and tell him that you are lost, they will come and fight you. Mm -hmm. What are the signs? Now, Jesus said in Matthew 24, let us go to it. So, verse 3, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, you call it the Olivet Discourse. The Olivet Discourse means he was having a discourse with the disciples, talking to them and telling them what will happen. I may not run through all of them because they are not. But before he, you see, what I like about this is verse 14. He said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world. For a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, what Jesus was saying that these things we are talking about today is something that is the gospel. We must make sure that we preach it to the whole world. Now, when we do that, the end will come. Yes. I thank God that Bishop sure didn't sit and say that we are going to raise funds. He didn't sit and say that we are here to talk about prosperity. Mm. Jesus said, said, This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. In all the world, what goes for the kingdom? Mm -hmm. Now, you remember the Great Commission? This is not the Great Commission. Yes. He's talking about the end time message. Matthew 24 14. Said, The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all areas. So, when you finish preaching it, the end shall come. Now, today we are not preaching the end time messages. We are preaching what we want people to hear. Mm -hmm. What are the signs? Yes. <clears throat> So take heed unto that no man deceive you. Matthew 24, verse 4. Say, so take heed, make sure <clears throat> that no man deceives you. That means it is possible that a lot of Christians will be deceived. Mm. Yeah. If Jesus said, take heed, be careful that no man deceive you, that means that it is possible that if you, you and I, you can be, and you, you can even be the leader, you'll be deceived. I watch another clip and say that when ministers of God come to them for powers, for their churches, mm -hmm. and they sell their pulpit to them, they buy the minister in the pulpit, and therefore all the souls will win are for them as well. Mm -hmm. That's what they were saying, yes. Mm -hmm. So you go there with your innocent heart, but the man of God who is standing here telling you things have sold his soul to the devil. Oh. And the devil is Bringing all sorts of things. Said, Why the man of God who is leading? So God, when the blind leads the blind, the two will go into the ditch. Mm. Jesus said, take it. That you and I are not deceived. It's not about 
the numbers, it's about the quality. Exactly. And here, verse 5. So for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Are we not seeing it today? Yes. Yes. This guy said he is greater than Jesus. Yes. He not say he is the Christ. Now when he say he is the Christ here, let me give you a revelation here. The Christ means I am the anointed. The Christ means the anointed. They say many shall come that I am the anointed one. I am the anointed one. I am the anointed one. Not that I'm the Jesus Christ. But many shall come with I am anointed. Even more than that. I am the anointed. When I touch you, I am the anointed. When I do this, I am the anointed. So many shall come and say, I am the Christ. Do we see that today? Yeah. Yes. And that means that even being a member of a church, be a member of a congregation or be a member of any body of Christ. Jesus said, take heed that nobody deceives you. That we don't just carry ourselves and become members and become this. You test the spirit. Is that really the truth? Yeah. The verse says, says that apart from that, and you shall hear of wars and rumors and all earthquakes and people being beheaded here and there. Do we see that? Yes. My wife showed me one of Christians who stood for the word of God. Tied both hands, two hands behind, turned the neck like that, and they were slapping the person. I said, Oh God. We in this part of the world, the Western world, we are blessed. Nobody will butcher you and slaughter you like that. <clears throat> But others are contending for the faith. Mm. But I said, no, see, all these things will happen because, but that's not what they end. But he said to make sure that you preach these things. And I believe that if the churches will go back and preach some of these things, the issue of, I'm not saying I'm not against prosperity, it's good to be blessed. But people will not do anything to be rich. People will not kill human beings to be rich. In Ghana, where we come from, the young of boys between, now if you go to, when we see obituary, people who are dead, when you go to Montreal, it's between 18 and 33. They die a lot. There's what we call Sakawa now in Ghana. Everybody wants to build a house. Everybody wants to buy a nice car. Everybody wants to do within between 18 years and 30 years. And when you take that type of thing, you don't bath, water should not touch your body. So when you go to a car washing area and water splash on you, you are dead. <laughs> yes. Some of them, you don't need to greet anybody. Some of them, you don't need to. There are a lot of things happening. What am I saying? Jesus said, take it. The environment we find ourselves may also be challenging. But what does he say in verse 7? For nation shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes and diverse places. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. What do we see? Yes. In the last two, three years, yes. the Arab Spring. Mm. Look at what has, it has ended now mm. in what we call the IS something, something, something. Mm -hmm. Now, Iraq, Syria, Kuwait, uh, Ukraine, Russia, Africa countries, and countries that whatever Jesus said, said. I said, when Jesus said that I will go and come back, and this signs will happen, the signs are happening, that tells you that his coming is imminent. Mm. Amen. Amen. It's not something for you if you wake up and by the grace of God we are not dead and you are able to see the day, mm -hmm. you should not take your life for granted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go out for the gospel. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the way I want to live my life anyway. Amen. And not for money anyway. Amen. And not for any financial Amen. Amen. Because in that case, mm -hmm. the end will come. Amen. Yes. Amen. And he said, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, to be slaughtered, shall kill you, and shall. You see? Are they not killing people now? Mm. Yes. Did you hear the testimony message I sent you? Some of you who, have, who are mine, I sent a lot. In Iraq, three days, night, 500 people were being killed around 4 a.m. Christians. Mm. And it's going to be worse. I, I was saying that if the Antichrist <clears throat> is coming in the form of a person and Jesus comes to take the saints mm. and those who are right based on the scripture could not go and you are to endure your own salvation with and assuming the Muslims are controlling the earth now. Can you say you are Christian? Mm. Look at even now, where there's freedom of religion, freedom of worship, 
What is happening now? And this is when the time, the grace now leaves us. And everybody, there's no grace for God. You have to fight to make it. And they tell you, deny Christ or we kill you. Can you say that you will not deny Christ? It's, this is our time. The end, the, the, everything is showing that the end is coming. Paul talked about it in Timothy. Stubbornness in children. Yes. Pride and arrogance. Said the love of many, because of that, many love for God who was good. Mm. We have the zeal. As we are doing something here, what we call Miracle Center, and that a lot of people come here to. Oh, sure. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. So, and many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. I don't, I don't know whether mm. this guy who says he is the Antichrist mm. so, has sold his life to the devil, and the devil says, Get me more souls. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But many people don't care what will happen to their soul. Mm -hmm. As long as they will get the fame, yes. they will get properties, yeah. they will get women, they will get money, they will get this. They don't care. I want us to sit up, please. God will, is a God of mercy, but he's also a God of justice. Mm -hmm. He punishes iniquity Amen. and punishes evil. So when he said, I don't want anybody to perish and long suffering. God is long suffering for a season. He doesn't have permanent friends. Mm. God has never got a permanent friend, let me tell you. And he doesn't have. Because he doesn't have a permanent friend. All of us are his friends. But when you mess up, he justice. And that's why one day this end will come. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 says we shall appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And every one of us will answer the things we are doing, whether good or bad. Whether good or bad. Whether good or bad. Some people don't care what they are doing, whether good or bad. But those of us who are here, whilst we are seeing the signs on the wall, it causes us to sit up. It causes us to be more proactive for the things of God. To stand for Jesus and to defend him. In our environment, nobody will kill you for talking about Christ. And he said, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was good. Mm. How many times are we able to pray? How many times are we able to read our Bible and spend time in the Word of God? This is a test of the love of God. Mm. So because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall was good. What is your love? The person you love, you spend more time with the person. And when we love God, God expects us to do what? Spend more time. And now things are becoming more and more tough now. When you wake up, the first thing you think about is how you can even pay your bills. And sometimes I'll read my Bible, I'll read my Bible. The whole week, you don't you go without even a chapter of the Bible. It's a sign of the end time. Things are getting tougher. When you pick the Bible, you don't even feel the edge to even read it anymore. In our churches today, how many church members will say that I have read through the New Testament once and I'm even going to read through the Old Testament? How many say that even I read a chapter a day? Mm -hmm. People don't care. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. But he that shall endure mm -hmm. unto the end, he said, shall be saved. Who shall be saved? Who is he that will be saved? Is it the person who goes to church? Is it the person who is a member of a church? No. From what I saw here, a lot of them are members of the church. Mm. But when we are not to pass judgment. But whilst we, you and I know, because we represent the light, when people are walking in darkness, you should know that these people, they are not making it. But the Bible says, but those who endure to the end, they shall be saved. We did some conference and we talk about finishing well. Mm. We have started very well. Mm. But the issue is that everybody starts, but not too many finish well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and everybody also will finish all right. But too often, not everybody who finishes, finishes well. But Jesus said, those who endure to the end, they shall be saved. Verse 24, he said, for there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, inasmuch that if it were possible, 
they shall deceive the very elect. Mm. What are we seeing today? False prophets. There was a guy who came from Ghana, I think he needed some money to complete his house or project. He said, God has asked him to, when it's raining, he should put a bucket of water in the, to collect some rain water. Not tap water, rain water. Mm -hmm. And as he gets that, a, a full bucket of that water, each cup, coffee type of, you know, coffee cup, tea cup, five million pounds. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he was on Ghana Radio. I listened to it myself, not that somebody told me. He was on Ghana Radio in FM stations here. Mm -hmm. And people, he said, God told me that I only need 20 people. That's 10,000 mm pounds. -hmm. He ended up having 500 people there. Mm -hmm. And when he had 500 people and the water fish, he said, I'm going to pray to God and get tap water for you. Mm -hmm. So he now got tap water for them. Why? Because you want migration? God is going to open the door for you. You want the fruit of the womb? God is going to open the door for you. You want the husband? God is going to open the door for you. What do you want? Job? God is opening the door for you. You are sick? <coughs> think God is going to open the door for you. 500 pounds. 500 pounds. These are the signs of the end time. Mm -hmm. And so it's very easy that today even genuine men of God who genuinely have the heart to do God's work. Sometimes you are shy to even tell people you are a pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The office of a pastor or a priest is not something you can just belittle. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 4 said that nobody takes this honor upon himself except those who are called. Amen. Amen. Today, what do we see? <clears throat> so because of these things who are right, prophet, uh, false prophets, false this, false this, false this. And if you don't take care, they will deceive the very elect. May God help us in this Amen. Amen. The signs are on the wall. And it's starting from the church. You see, the devil is so smart that he will not start saying, because when you see somebody who you know doesn't hold your Bible and he asks you to follow him, will you follow him? Mm -hmm. The devil will start from the church. And that's why they say judgment will begin in the house of God. Mm. And if the righteous is scarcely saved, what would the righteous be? Mm. Say, Behold, I'm coming with you. And my reward is with me. He that is unjust, let him be unjust. He that is just, continue to be just. He that is righteous, continue to be righteous. If you are righteous, continue to be righteous. Why? I am coming and my reward is with me. Revelation 22, verse 10 to 12. God is calling us back unto himself. He's calling us to sit up while the signs are on the wall. What if the rapture doesn't come, but we are called home? We have watched Thousand to One, that film. Have you ever watched it before? A, 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 a big man who had a big church in Korea, Pastor Park. The massive church, he had about seven cars, every little car, he had one of them. And then he fell sick, and in the sickness, he couldn't survive and died. Now, because as a pastor of a, a congregation of over 5,000 souls, he thought he would make it. When he got to the gate, now, the end said he saw that at the gate, 1,000 people will go to the left to hell, and one person will go right. So he know that when he gets to his turn. But the angel said, you don't belong to the right. You are part of the left. So what? I sold my car. I sold my house. I did this. And God said, you took all the honor, all the glory for yourself. Yes, now what he was doing? He showcasing BBC, CNN, and Pasapad, and this. He never gave glory to God. God said, I'm sorry. Go back and tell him. And he's dead again. This thing happened in the 90s. After three years, he died again. I was saying, I'm sending you back. Go and tell them that you couldn't make it. What if you and I, it happens that our time is up? Mm -hmm. Yes, it can happen. It can happen that for us to go through Hezekiah's experience of giving 15 more years to live. 
and messing up our generation. God will say that, make it to heaven and save your generation. God is calling us to live every day he gives us as a grace and make it to heaven. Amen. I see that all of us who are here today is for a reason mm. and for a purpose. Mm. God is calling us back to himself. As I was coming, say, I'm calling my children who will be there back to myself. Amen. We are working right. He said, no, then make sure, do what you are doing, do it well. The end will come. And the signs are on the wall. And because of other people who come in, the signs are on the wall. But I want you to sit out and every day live your life as if that is the last day of your life. <laughs> That's the way we live a successful Christian life. Live every day as if that day is the last day of your life. God bless you. I say God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Father God, that's all. You are faithful to your way. Say so what you say to all, and what you say to each one of us, you are saying to all, watch. You are calling us to watchfulness. That signs are on the wall. I pray that your children will watch. Your sons will watch. Your daughters will watch. None of us here will be a victim of the trappings and deception of the enemy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You will take the glory in our lives. Hallelujah. We will make it before you, Lord. Amen. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you worship, Lord. Because you are faithful. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give a clap of it to Bishop Asif.